spent their whole life studying economics and money, are they willing to say everything they've learned up until that point is wrong? No, they're not willing to say that. Bitcoin comes around and I'm allowing it to, to like I said, you know, I wrote the phrase, you don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes yeah. you, right? Really? So that came from a, a, a conference called um, Crypto Springs in Palm Springs, California. And this woman comes up to me and, the, you know, she just found out about Bitcoin and here's how she can make it better. The Bitcoin singularity, when we join with Satoshi, and uh, the whole concept of um, money is redefined in our global unconscious minds, and violence is demonetized, absolutely. Centralized systems, long dominant in finance and governance, are teetering on the edge of collapse as Bitcoin's decentralized revolution gains unstoppable momentum. With its finite supply and incorruptible nature, Bitcoin represents a paradigm shift. As adoption grows, Max Kaiser predicts a seismic event, a metaphorical sledgehammer that will shatter the foundations of centralized control. In an interview with Brandon Gentile, Kaiser compares Bitcoin's network effect to transformative technological moments, like the rise of the internet and Netscape's explosive growth in the 90s. He suggests that as Bitcoin's network expands, it will trigger a Bitcoin singularity, where current economic and social systems fall giving way to a new order based on decentralized, incorruptible value systems. In this new era, individuals regain their authentic selves, no longer manipulated by fiat currencies, institutions, or centralized wealth control. Max envisions a world where Bitcoin empowers people to reclaim autonomy, self-worth, and authenticity, all underpinned by a system valuing fairness and transparency. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. Ideologues, ideologies are very limiting. You know, in economics, we've been we've had only a few schools of economics, you know, Keynesian, Austrian, you know, socialism, capitalism, right? So really, Bitcoin is a new chapter in economics, it's a new chapter in money, and for people who spent their whole life studying economics and money, are they willing to say everything they've learned up until that point is wrong? No, they're not willing to say that. Very few, yes. you know, maybe two or three. You know, For yes. me, because I've always been, I've been reluctant to get too um, monolithic in what I do mm -hmm. and stick with something for too long and become too rigid in my thinking. You know, Bitcoin comes around and I'm allowing it to, to, like I said, you know, I wrote the phrase, you don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes yeah. you, right? Really? So that came from a, a, a conference called um, Crypto Springs in Palm Springs, California. And this woman comes up to me and, the, you know, she just found out about Bitcoin and here's how she can make it better. And, you know, and like I've heard this now from many people over years, I'm like, look, you don't change Bitcoin. Bitcoin changes you, right? And it's just like, you know, that's it. You know, that, and I only mention that because a lot of people use that phrase and I get no accreditation. Like so much <laughs> of the intellectual property in this industry, oh, I man. never get credit for, I mean, Michael Saylor, I have the shit he says, I said first, okay? The other half is from Trace Mayer, okay? And I stole I Trace Mayer shit, okay? So it's Trace Mayer, Max, and then Michael Saylor. But, you know, he doesn't give accreditation. No, I don't know what's up with that. But anyway, it's all good uh, because we're on the same pilgrimage to same the now. Bitcoin singularity when we join with Satoshi. And uh, the whole concept of um, money is redefined in our global unconscious minds and violence is demonetized, absolutely. And then what's left when you remove violence is love. Well, the, the key word there is exponential, right? Um, the network effect mm -hmm. and the doubling effect that happens yeah. every year or every however many months, like Moore's Law yeah. or something, you know, Bitcoin's doubling effect, the network effect. And we saw it with the internet. So the internet in the 90s was bouncing around and we got to like 300 million users. And then around 1997, I believe, Netscape went public. Mm -hmm. and, and that was um, the moment that suddenly went up to a billion, two billion users. Okay? It, the, the network effect doubled, you know, and doubled again. So you went 300 million, 
600 million, 1.2 billion. Boom, boom, boom. You know, 4 million, 5 billion. So that's, that's, I think we're at that Netscape moment in 2024. Yeah, feels like so I think a year from now, we're going to have triple the users. We'll have Bitcoin at 300, 400,000 a coin. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have uh, just uh, people are, are it, it pulled into it. You know, it's like a black hole, if mm -hmm. you will. All value, you know, everything goes to zero against Bitcoin in terms of purchasing power. Yeah. So that means not only fiat money, but stocks, bonds, commercial real estate, fine art, gold, mm -hmm. gold gets demonetized. I mean, yes. Trump did mention gold. Max alludes to Bitcoin's transformative power, not merely as a technological innovation, but as a fundamental paradigm shift in economics and monetary systems. Bitcoin challenges traditional ideas about currency, decentralization, and the government's role in finance. For those deeply rooted in classical economics, embracing Bitcoin requires them to rethink much of what they've learned, an uncomfortable shift for many entrenched and established frameworks. By staying open-minded, individuals allow Bitcoin to reshape their understanding of money and economics. Max's phrase, you don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes you, underscores its ability to fundamentally alter not only how we view financial systems, but also how individuals evolve in response to it. This suggests that those who adopt Bitcoin experience a transformation in their mindset, potentially opening themselves to a future that breaks away from the economic norms of the past. And I've seen a lot of things come and go, and I've experienced many things in the Bitcoin world, and I really see it overlapping the alcoholics, my journey in recovery in Alcoholics Anonymous as well. So, again, getting back to authenticity, you know, sobriety allowed me to be more of my authentic self. Bitcoin does the same thing. I feel alive and I can always feel more alive. You know, I mean, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to people out here. I like meeting people and hearing what they're up to because that energizes me, mm -hmm. you know, because nothing's more interesting than, than other human beings. That's my answer. The thing about talking about finance and banks is that there's no risk. I mean, you can say Jamie Dimon's a cunt and Jamie Dimon won't care because they can always print more money, <laughs> right? So, right. I mean, when you attack the banks and you attack the central banks, they do not care. But when I said on Al Jazeera that I declared a fatwa on Al Jazeera against Hank Paulson during the 2008 crisis and said that his head should bounce down the Capitol stairs in Washington, D.C., right? I said I was trying to trigger uh, Simon Rushdie on a U.S. official mm -hmm. on Al Jazeera English. I mean, that was probably one of the dicier moments in my broadcasting <laughs> career. And um, the response was from Al Jazeera. They invited me back the next week and they said, we'll have you back to talk about stuff. Please don't issue any fatwas. You know, that was their, their, their request. <laughs> um, but when you're talking about the finance world, literally they don't care. The, the, the times that I have veered into other areas in energy mm. and defense or military spending. Okay. The, mo the journalists, the most journalists murders are environmental journalists covering the energy industry. They're, every year, many get murdered. And um, if I don't cover that area be for that reason. It's too dangerous. Wow. It's too dangerous. Also, military, military contractors, I make I, I, I make jokes about them, et cetera, but I don't, I would, I don't do an expose mm -hmm. like on yeah. Rockwell yeah. or Boeing. You know, like I would never go out there and say, an insider told me Boeing uh, you know, uh, is, is selling faulty equipment or mm -hmm. something like that because they would kill me. They kill people, yeah. right? That's so... Yes. So it sounds like, oh, I'm saying stuff that is, you know, could potentially be trouble. But, you know, if it's in finance, it, nobody cares, is what I'm saying. I never felt ever at risk saying anything about people in the finance business. But in the oil or energy sector or the defense military contracting sector, it's definitely another story. Look at uh, Julian Assange. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Say, yeah. He posts a video of the U.S. industrial complex killing people from a helicopter, and he just went through this harsh ordeal, uh, and, and he now is free, thank, thank goodness. But, um, but that's not for me. So, I mean, I have my, uh, I have my, 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 my guardrails mm -hmm. that I wouldn't... You know, I don't, I mean, on the finance side and on the Bitcoin side, I bring enough interest to it 
And I think that's the solution for it. I think that's the answer to it. I think everyone benefits from it. So um, I'm happy to stay there. But, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not like I, I think I'm Teflon and that nothing can hurt me. Um, that's why I stay away from areas that I know yes. um, would be uh, dangerous for yes. me. Pseudonymous trader Horn Harz believes Bitcoin is nearing its grand finale, marking a crucial point in its journey. With 650 days since the market lows and several months after April's halving event, the summer lull appears to be over. This cycle is unique, as Bitcoin hit new all-time highs before the halving, showcasing unprecedented strength. Currently, Bitcoin is trading at $56,362, with legendary trader Peter Brand predicting a potential rise to $150,000 by late 2025. Market sentiment is improving, driven by Bitcoin's rise to $58,000, which has boosted retail investor confidence. However, for Bitcoin to reclaim its former highs, large holders with over 100 Bitcoin will need to accumulate aggressively. Meanwhile, Bitcoin ETFs are gaining renewed momentum, with $17 million in inflows on Tuesday, signaling growing institutional interest. Despite Bitcoin's typical underperformance in September, bullish sentiment is making a comeback. Smaller wallets holding less than one Bitcoin now hold the highest supply ratio in seven months. Max Kaiser's bold predictions align with this momentum, as he sees Bitcoin as the sledgehammer set to dismantle centralized systems, driven by its unstoppable network effect. As the old financial order weakens, Kaiser envisions Bitcoin as the force propelling us into a decentralized future where true value and autonomy prevail. He predicts that Bitcoin's growing network will crush traditional financial systems, opening the door to a new era of decentralized power. With this in mind, what are your thoughts on Bitcoin's future? Do you see widespread global adoption, or do you have a different perspective? Share your thoughts in the comments below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.